In this video, I want to break down the Axe FX3 preset that we are using live with Ragdoll. We're using one Axe FX3 for guitar and for bass simultaneously. Let's check it out. Let's take a look at the guitar side of things. I'm playing my PRS AC245, which is a guitar I play live the most. I'm using Recto One Orange Modern, together with this cab that I made of my Marshall 4x12 with greenbacks. The greenbacks are just a point of difference, I think, because it's really easy to just use V30s all the time, and they sound great. I have some IRs that I made using V30s. I think the built-in York Audio V30 IRs are excellent, but for what I'm doing at the moment, I really like the way this TV mix sounds and there is a touch of room reverb going on here because we're using in-ears that just kind of takes a little bit of that like directness out of it and just makes it sound and feel better in the ears. This is scene one where I spend probably 70 to 80% of the gig. Uh, it's just a straight up chunky rhythm sound. Uh, you can see there's a grinder boost on in the preamp section as well and in the power amp no, the power supply, I've set the Variac to 75% to try to emulate the spongy mode of my old dual recto, and this is the sound. So there's a lot of fears, there's a lot of rattiness in there, but playing with a very loud bass player and drummer, that really helps the guitar cut through in the mix. And I just normally tell our sound guys to set the board flat when they do this. The last show that we played, it sounded amazing doing that. So I guess there's something to that. That is scene number one. Scene number two uses the same amp, but there is a control switch attached to the input trim here that basically just turns the gain up for me. So that's cool. That gives me more gain. There's a parametric EQ that gets kicked in. You can see I'm boosting 3 dB overall for my solos and I am giving 1400 hertz, just a tiny little kick in there just to emphasize that mid-range. And there is a delay that I kick on. I'm using the Deluxe Mind Guy in here. Uh, you can see the settings there. The reverb hasn't changed, that stays the same. And it sounds like this. <laughs> So it's basically the same thing with some delay, which is like cheat mode for playing guitar solos and a bit more gain, which makes it easier to play, which is very important live. Moving on to scene three, scene three is a lo-fi scene. It's exactly the same as scene one, but I've got this EQ built in there just to give you that kind of like lo-fi phone EQ. For any sections like intros and a couple of things like that, our latest single, Rust, has that sound in there. So that's scene three, which isn't super interesting. Scene four is for the breakdown part of the song. There's two things that happen here. Uh, if you have a look at the, not the amp block, but there's a multiband compressor, which comes on. And the input, I've cranked the gate right up just for a kind of genty thing. And this is for any really percussive parts that I need to play live. <laughs> Again, it's just to tighten everything up. It, it makes my life easier when I'm playing live so I can still jump around like an idiot. And then scene five is, uh, I use this scene quite a lot. This just kicks a rhythmic delay onto my main rhythm preset uh, using the stereo BBD delay. And I use this in nearly every song. There's some kind of part where I have stereo delay happening. <laughs> So playing in a three-piece, that really just gives the guitar sound a little bit of body and dimension. And when I'm playing stuff that isn't on the low strings, it just kind of pads stuff out a little bit. I really, really like that effect. It's, um, it's kind of been done to death by everybody, but there's a reason that it's been done to death because it sounds good and it works really, really well. So that is the guitar side of things. Uh, what I'm using on the FC controllers, I have a 
layout dedicated to performance, which this will load up and you can see over here. Uh, I think it's layout number four here. And these are all preset overrides. Essentially what is going on is I have in my per preset settings, I just got these set of scenes. So it's scene one, two, three, four. There is a tap tempo and a tuner in there. And that just lets me flick between them. I think I've got the breakdown scene is on the same button as the main rhythm scene, but it's set to hold. So if I tap button number one, it will give me my rhythm scene. But if I hold it, it will give me the multiband compressor and the tighter gate on there, which is really, really easy to navigate. So that's the guitar side of this live preset. All right, time to embarrass myself on the bass. I'm playing Ryan's Ernie Ball Music Man that he uses live. This has an onboard three band EQ that he uses to kind of tailor for particular songs. I don't know what he does there, but it always sounds really good. So the bass is going through input two and coming out of output two over here. There's also the ability to send a clean DI through output four, which is a nice feature. Should the sound guy want it or should Ryan want to run an amp on stage? Uh, if we're not uh, super lazy like we normally are and we actually take an amp to a gig, which is basically never nowadays. All right, what we've got going on, this Black Glass 7K together with a tone match we made of his Sans amp. This sounds exactly like his Sans amp. You can go and watch the video we did where we tone match that. That is running into SV Bass 2. No advanced settings going on there, just basically the straight up EQ and drive settings there. We're using these York Audio 2x10 IRs, a blend of an SM7 and a PR40, which sound really good. And similar to the guitars, there is this room reverb on there for when we are running ears. The only special little thing going on is there is a control switch attached to the boost on the solo scene for guitar, which is scene two uh, over here. This boost kicks on and just gives the bass a tiny amount of what is that 4 dB of extra drive. So this is the regular old bass sound. And then when I'm playing a guitar solo and I hit scene two on the FC controller and I get my solo boost, the bass gets a little bit more drive. So that is a very basic bass sound. I mean, you don't need a lot going on here. Ryan has to sing as well. So the less stuff he has to do, the better. Basically, I control his solo boost when I turn on my lead boost. So that's a nice thing to have synced up. Uh, everything's controlled from one FC controller. He just has to plug his bass into the back panel input two of the Axe FX3. And the rest of it's taken care of. So that is... Super, super handy, you know, for somebody who has to sing and play bass. The less stuff going on, the better at a live show. So he can just really focus on his performance there. Uh, uh, you know, I don't have to sing lead vocals at the gig. I just play guitar. So I take control of the mothership there. And uh, having this preset dialed in like this is really handy. The other thing which is great as well is we've got the perform screens, the Per preset perform controls, if you have a look at the bottom, uh, these are the controls for the bass. So this is the, I think the dark glass drive and then bass, mid, treble and level for the amp. Instant access to that. We just leave this on the per preset performance controls. And then for the guitar side of things, this is the top row. There's the bass, middle, treble and presence for the amp. And there is the solo boost level in the parametric EQ on the guitar stuff. And there's also the global performance controls if we need them. Basically, this would be stuff that can happen during sound check. I can tweak the cab high and low cuts, the delay mix, things like that. And then the per preset screen we would leave on for the gig in case there's anything which needs to be tweaked on the fly while we're doing the show, which uh, we haven't had to do yet, which is really, really handy. You know, kind of do everything in sound check, set it and forget it. But that is, yeah, how we use the Axe FX3 for guitar and bass simultaneously. One unit, one FC controller, a bass and a guitar takes care of everything that we need. And uh, I think this is pretty amazing. I will put this preset up on 
line for you guys to check out. The York Audio IRs, you would need to go and buy the cab pack to get those. But the guitar IR that I've used here, you can download from Axchange for free. Thanks for watching the video. Any comments or suggestions, please get them in in the comment section for the video. You guys have been awesome. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time.